Good morning. I hope that you had the best Christmas possible. I'm enjoying time with family and friends here in Arizona. It's always a bit odd for me down here to see Christmas without snow. It's also a delight to be able to pedal around on bicycles to look at Christmas lights in the neighborhood. Sometimes a change of perspective lets us find new ways to appreciate all that surrounds us. The last few years have been chaotic, painful, and filled with reasons for us to question our shared humanity. We continue to witness the brutality of the human condition, the increasing violence as a first resort instead of a last, the increasing political and social divides, the increasing pressure of a strained economic system. So much anguish, anxiety, and depression. So much. And yet, we have just celebrated Advent and Christmas. We have retold the story of Elizabeth and Mary, two mothers full of joy and expectation, and we have retold the very clean version of the Christmas birth. You know, the one where everything is silent night, baby in a manger, family, angels, and welcome guests. As I contemplated what I could share with you this morning, I came across a poem that struck a chord with me. It's called A Prayer for Our Christmas Mess, and it's by Micah Busey. And it shares a much different perspective of the Christmas story. Have a listen. A Prayer for Our Christmas Mess. I'll bet there was no peace around that manger. The stable was probably pretty unstable. No familiar friends to be found, only pushy strangers circling, a halo of restlessness ringing. Some joy might have surfaced every now and then, some happiness might have hovered close by, but mostly it was tears and piss and shit and blood and spit and puke and snot and sweat and grunts and dread and grief and inadequacy and disappointment and annoyance and love. O oh, holy night, O oh, messy night, when new light spilled and spread and the soul felt its worth, for it's not in pristine purity that inspiration ignites. It's always in the holy human chaos, in the weird and wild burps and hiccups that the soul realizes, I've got this. Fear is there and the future feels foreign, but the story's never about the perfect plan or assurance that the answers will eventually be midnight clear. It's about deepening the dive into the dirt and meeting those miracles lurking in the muck. So be a mess, but make some room. No matter the instability of your soul, no matter the muddied mood of your manger, you are an eternally worthy home for that queerly hopeful love that is always looking for a place to be born. Amen. When I think back about this congregation and the years that I've been at this church, I can recall so many struggles, so much pain and chaos and grief and inadequacy and disappointment and annoyance. Some joy surfaced every now and then and some happiness hovered close by. Time and time again, I have witnessed the power of the grace and love that binds this congregation together. It's always in the holy human chaos, in the weird and wild burps and hiccups, that the soul realizes, I've got this. We've got this. It's hard sometimes to not question why God would come to earth at all, much less as a fully human infant, to grow and experience the challenges and pains of this life. Why would anyone choose this? If you are familiar with Psalm 8 in the New Revised Standard Version, our scripture reading today might have sounded or felt a little different this morning. A bit of a different perspective to help us glean something new from the passage. Wilda Gaffney, the author of this version, writes, The psalm keeps us from thinking too lowly of humanity as a container for God. We are the craftwork of God made in the divine image, a little lower than, perhaps barely brushing the divine. That applies equally to all of us without regard to gender, orientation, or their performance. We are the craftwork of God, made in the divine image. Beautiful, isn't it? God created, and God loves creation. 
God watched creation struggle, war amongst itself, working hard to destroy itself. When flood and threat and fear seemed not to be enough to help this young creation right itself, God tried another way. God loved creation enough to join it in the most intimate way possible, through the womb of a mother-to-be. God joined us where we were most willing to meet God as a child that we needed to honor, nurture, and protect. No matter how broken humanity might seem, no matter how far from God we seem to turn, God is with us, always reaching, teaching, and rejoicing with us. The poet's words ring true for me. Fear is there and the future feels foreign. We don't have a perfect plan, and we might never have midnight clear answers. I hope that we can deepen the dive into the dirt, dig into scripture, dig into our faith journeys, dig into our hearts, and dig into our shared community. Challenge each other to try out new perspectives, new readings and hearings of God's words, new ways of listening for God's presence in our lives, and new ways of appreciating each other and all of God's creation. May we, too, find the miracles in the muck. Happy New Year. And I hope for all of you the blessings of the season. Amen.